we're going to get started with the biblical entrepreneurship presentation on characteristics of God's promises. Dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for every person who comes tonight to listen to this presentation. We are grateful whom you call and draw upon to be here tonight, that they would hear the message, and that what the Holy Spirit has concealed in his word would be revealed by the Holy Spirit to our ears and planted in good soil. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. So tonight I would like to um, <clears throat> introduce in a few words the Bible promises of God and then I will open up for conversation. God's promises are something he always keeps and every promise that he makes is tied to a condition. These conditions are basically not really a price of receiving the blessings of the promise, but it's a preparation, making yourself ready for receiving. Just as um, Jesus' salvation and grace is free, but it's tied to the condition that you need to accept the gift. As you cannot give anyone a gift and a present whose hands are tight shut, so is God tells them to open your hands and receive the gift. That's the only condition. Similarly, um, every promise in the Bible is accompanied with a condition. And some of them we're going to explore today. Um, God promises are something he always keeps. We know this from Psalms 89, 34. No, I will not break my covenant. I will not take back one word of what I said. The promises of God are yes and amen. It is in the Bible. Second Corinthians 1.20 says, For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him amen to the glory of God through us. Promises we're going to find that God makes regarding eternal, eter, eternal life, which is actually everlasting life, forgiveness, Holy Spirit, giving the Holy Spirit to those who ask him, money and finances related ones, to cover for our need, Bible promises for healing, wisdom and guidance, children and family and marriage, descendants, peace, overcoming temptation, protection, promises against fear, resurrection promises, and the end of all suffering. Uh, today we will um, just um, tap into a little bit into the Holy Spirit and the um, financial promises of God. While I will um, focus uh, first on the Holy Spirit's promises, because God's promises include the Holy Spirit, he promises it to those who ask the fruits of the Spirit. In Galatians 5, 10 to 2, 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. We have promised the Holy Spirit in Luke eleven thirteen. If you then, being evil, know how to give 
good gifts to your children, how much more will you, your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Again, it is just like with salvation. The condition of receiving the Holy Spirit is no more than asking with our own voice. How much easier could God may have made it? Nobody asks who does not believe. There is a tremendous amount of faith behind that already. And every single one of us has at least as much as that. The Holy Spirit will guide you and show you the truth. It is in the Holy Bible in John 16, 20. The 16, 13, when he, the Holy, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will shew you things to come. The same way is all of uh, God's um, prophets, and teachers and um, God's mouthpieces on earth has been told, you don't need to worry about what to say. Don't craft a speech. Just show up and let it happen because he will send his Holy Spirit to, onto you and he will put the mouth into your, put the words into your mouth. Now, why this is so very important it means that we are never left alone. But in order to have him with us in circumstances, we need to ask him. When the God promises about money, prosperity, and finances, um, he, he says in Psalms 34, 9, 10, that, Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, there is no want to those who fear him. The long lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. And how important that is. When you work for the Lord, when you step into a covenant with the Lord, he becomes the provider. He becomes like a husband unto you, a husband unto the wife. Um, he becomes the provider, he delivers, and he loves you. Um, this is also a promise. What, um, what is um, <clears throat> very important to remember here, though, that you need to accept him as your leader and as your provider, because many of us will have issue with um, what we could call ego um, or disbelief or the carnal mind whispering in um, in directions of reality, current reality, instead of what, uh, anticipating God's promises. When the mindset itself is not um, providing the conditions of miracles because it is not miracle mindedness then God himself cannot deliver every single time when Jesus heals a person from the crowd he, every time he is being thanked for healing he turns around the credit and he says it is your faith that has healed you and that is our hope. Those people, especially the woman who grabs onto the hem of his garment and Jesus feels the uh, power leaving him, turns around and asks, who touched me? I could feel power went out me, off me. Then the woman is shattered. She's afraid. She's wondering what's going to happen. I, it was me, Lord, because I knew that even if I just touched the hem of your garment, I will be healed. And that is miracle-mindedness. 
that is anticipating the blessing coming from just even touching Jesus. And today in the New Age movement, we hear so much about um, to anticipate miracles and accept it that it is, it is already ours. How about that? Your, as soon as you ask for it, it is yours. Maybe maybe the secret movie even more so um, breaks it down for us in an understanding. He says, just go and drive the car that like you want to manifest. Well, um, it does say a lot about the person, what they ask for, but the, it still makes the point that in order for you to manifest, that miracle that you um, that you long for, that you have the Father for. Besides asking, you also um, want to already imagine it happening. It is yours as soon as you believe it. And the woman got healed because he believed that touching the hem of Jesus's robe was absolutely enough for for him to restore her health. You will take, God will take care of your day-to-day -day needs. It is in the Bible. Matthew 6, 31, 34 says, Therefore do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Did you hear that? Jesus says, do not worry. Worry-mindedness is not the same as miracle-mindedness. It is the opposite of miracle-mindedness. What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things are the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God. Basically, he tells them to become a spiritual Israelite and ask. So, but seek for the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. As you meditate on God's word, your way will be prosperous. It is in the Bible, Joshua 1, 8. This book of the law shall not be depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Test God, see if he will bless you, will more than you can hold it is in the bible malachi 3 10 to 11 bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this try me now on this god is challenging you to challenge him that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Test God, see if he will bless you, will more than you can hold. It's in the Bible, Malachi 3, 10, 11, bring all the tithes into the storehouse to tell me be food in my house and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessings that there will not be room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit to you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And what I would like you to see here is, I'm going to I'm going to give you a list of a list of um, scripture that is uh, 
Bible promises for prosperity um, that is over 365 uh, mess messianic prophets. There is exactly 365 messianic prophecies in the Old Testament that are um, promising the coming of the Messiah, the Savior, Jesus. And in all together in the entire Bible, and most generally, there is 3,573 promises that being counted by one person. Um, somebody already uh, counted that there is actually twice as much, which would be 7,487, but that promise count um, the twice as much promises that they claim is they mostly like going around promises, not direct promises, like insinuating the promise. And I'm just going to hold this up so that if you wanted to, those are the Bible scripture verses that I have collected for you for today to actually um, look up. Now, why that is important? Because every single one of them, because we wanted to today talk about the characteristics of God's promises. And uh, I actually mentioned every single one of them by now. I'm going to sum it up and complete today's presentation with that. The characteristics of God's promises are actually the very um, characteristics of God himself. When God gave his word, this word, the Bible itself, to his people today, and for centuries, we say somebody gives you their word, it means they give make you a promise. The entire length of the Bible is nothing more than a promise of salvation. And um, what was fulfilled by the end of the Old Testament, and, and it's actually in the New Testament, what was fulfilled is God. Old Testament promise was fulfilled in the New Testament and renewed the promise in Revelation after the resurrection, after the ascension. He, in, in the moment of ascension, Jesus has renewed God's promise of coming back for his people. What... Um, we would like to, um, I would like to round out here is when God makes a promise, he gives his word. And his word does not come, return void. The promise will be taking effect. It will do what it set out to do. That's how serious it is. That's what God's word and promises are about. When God makes a promise for our everyday life, for our well-being, for our salvation, for our um, provisions, um, he, the promises that he made to Abraham about the promised land, about the prophecies, about the descendants and influence, about the mission that is expected to be um, a salvation unto others and a salvation unto the Gentiles. Um, all those promises um, have in them two inherent characteristics is that they are tied to a condition and that condition is a challenge that needs to be fulfilled. And those, uh, it is for his people. And also that um, they are always in your 
benefit for for his promise god doesn't need to make promises for human beings he's supreme ruler he's sovereign he can do whatever he wants he didn't need to make one promise to his creation or to his people and he made already over 3573 and according to some counts it is over 7487 and he every single time speaks a promise and ties it to a condition that is almost equivalent of open your hands open your heart believe have faith speak ask not really something that we need to pay a price for because jesus has already paid the price but that condition prepares you to accept the gift of the promise it is always for our benefits God doesn't gain from it except a friend in heaven, which he's looking forward to. And it always comes pretty much for free. Every single one of them is free. So I am going to complete this presentation. Uh, I said as much as I wanted for today and in order to um, make a visual um, demonstration of what a promise of God is, I would introduce the idea of a handshake. Yes, he gives his book, his word to his people. Because when you give your word to someone, you make a promise and you keep it and you shake a hand but are you ready to shake the hand? That's all he wants, to shake your hand. He's, he's offering his gifts, and all he needs you to do is to shake your hand. Are you willing to shake your his hand? Are you willing to shake God's hand and accept his promises? And I will uh, read you the categories of his promises one more time. So I would refresh it for you. He makes promises unto everlasting life, unto forgiveness. Anyone who repents will be forgiven, except for the unforgivable sin that is, the, that is grieving the Holy Spirit. But anyone who repents, and that's the condition, will be forgiven. The Holy Spirit, he will send his Holy Spirit again with the condition of you need to ask for it. He will provide his prosperity, but you need to challenge him on it. And um, he, he will provide for our needs. He promises healing. He promises wisdom, guidance, children, family and marriage. Peace, overcoming temptation. Now that is a big one protection against fear he promises um resurrection at the end of times and end of all suffering all the goodness you can tell that god is not making one bad promise every single one of them is good promise something he did not have to make and that's what i call the characteristics of god's promises so go ye and be a salvation unto others so that you may have treasures gathered up in heaven. And why that is important because tomorrow we're going to uh, hear a presentation on what Jesus means by treasures gathered up in heaven. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.